Hi, this is Chris Gould. I'm here with Procurement IQ, and today I'll be doing a brief walkthrough of the procurement research tool we offer and exploring the interface and functionality of the site a little bit. So to get started, you'll see here that we have a simple search interface to search through and find information on the categories you're interested in. We have over a thousand reports on various products and service categories in this research library. So I can come here and search for something like facilities. I'll go ahead and type that in. And you can see a number of different reports are popping up. I'm going to click on that. You can see facilities management services. For the sake of this report, I'll go ahead and just click into this here. So once you click into a report, you'll see that we have a number of tabs across the top. The first tab and the one that we're on here is the about this report page. Think of this as a cover sheet that defines the scope of the category that you're looking at. You can see that definition listed out here. The next tab across the top is the report overview section. Here we have done is condensed down all the information in the rest of the report into a few infographics and paragraphs you'll see listed below. So for example, you'll see here that prices are forecasted to rise at 2.5% every year for the next three years. But within the actual report, we're going to have a discussion around this, a dedicated section talking about why we are forecasting prices to rise in this way. So I'll scroll down a little bit here over some of this. You'll see the buyer power score, and I want to show you this because it's something unique that we've created here at Procurement IQ. This score is a rating on a scale of one to five that illustrates how much leverage you have going into um, this category based purely on the external market factors. So uh, if the number is closer to a five, it means you have more leverage going into negotiations. If the number is closer to a one, it means you'll have less leverage going into negotiations. I'm going to pop back up to the top here. So we've reviewed the first two tabs across the top. Uh, which are more of a summary of the rest of the content, you'll notice that the remaining tabs across the top here represent stages of the strategic sourcing process. What we've done is we've aligned all of our content that will help you in that stage of the sourcing process and listed it within that associated tab. So for example, if you're in the beginning stages of a procurement assessing the opportunity here, uh, you're probably looking for pricing information. So you might go into this tab and learn about average prices or the forecasting on where prices are going. So let's actually do that right now. I'll go ahead and click on price summary from this drop down here. You'll see that we have the average price or the benchmark price listed here along with the discussion around the benchmark price and what it represents for the chosen category you're looking at. We also have some geographic pricing information listed here, the difference from the national average that you can come to expect. So I scroll down a little bit, you'll see we talk about the price drivers, both internal uh, input costs, pardon me, and external demands. If we keep going down, we'll look at the raw data that we use to make our calculations from those um, external demand and input cost drivers. And then lastly, some of those discussions around both historical price trends and also where we see the price going. So I'll scroll back up to the top here. So let's say you're moving on in your sourcing process and you're looking to identify the vendors um, in this particular category that can provide this product or service for you. You can come over to the Evaluate Supply Market tab and click on Vendor Company Types. This is down below, so we're looking at Supply Market Characteristics here. I'm going to click on this. If I scroll down, you'll see you're going to get a list of the major vendors who provide this product or service in the United States. Uh, we then are going to break down vendors by market share, company revenue, financial risk, and a few other criteria. Come back up to the top, and, and lastly, let's say that you're putting together an RFP and want to ensure you're including everything in your solicitation the first time around. These next two tabs here will be very helpful for that. So in the Conduct RFP Strategy, you'll find a list of suggested items to include in an RFP for this category. And these are going to be different for every single report. And then on the next page here, on the Negotiate tab, you'll see a list of questions that are equally helpful for including in a solicitation in an RFP. And clients have also told me these are really helpful for stimulating conversations with internal stakeholders. 
So I'll come back to the home page. We have barely skimmed the surface of everything included uh, in this tool, but that's just a quick high-level overview of what procurement, I, procurement IQ offers with our collection of over 1,000 procurement reports. Um, thanks for watching. My name is Chris, and we hope to hear from you soon.